Google just released the successor to its Gemini model, Gemini 2.0, and I'm pretty sure it's going to give OpenAI a serious wake-up call. They're launching Gemini 2.0, and AI is about to enter what they call the agentic era. So we're talking about AI agents that can actually do stuff, and I'm about to show you why this is so freaking huge. So first up, we have Gemini 2.0 Flash. Now they're calling it experimental, but you know, that's just Google being Google. They're saying it's faster, more powerful, and it even beats out 1.5 Pro on some of those, you know, super hard benchmark. But what's really cool is that it can now do multimodal output. So like you can give it text, audio, video, images, right, code and all that. And it can give you answers with images and text to speech all built in. Now, this is a direct shot across the bow at GPT-40 Omni, which also have these kinds of native multimodal capabilities. It seems like a very similar technology with GPT-40. We have had some demos, but OpenAI is doing their usual sort of closed off approach. So we don't have full access to these features yet, I guess. It seems that OpenAI is becoming a closed AI, I don't know. So let's take a look at the uh, Artificial Analysis Quality Index, or AAQI, as most of us are not going to say. And here we can see that Google's Flash 2.0 is currently only behind OpenAI 01 model, which isn't a huge shock because, well, 01 was designed for those really complex reasoning tasks. But I've got a feeling this chart's going to see some changes pretty soon, especially when the full Gemini 2.0 Pro model drops. Okay, this is where it gets really interesting. They also showed off some uh, prototypes, and the first one is Project Astra. Remember they talked about this at I.O.? Well, it's like their vision for a truly universal AI assistant. And they've made some serious upgrades. This thing can, like, see what you see through your phone's camera and understand it. So first look at this clip. I've got this email with apartment info. Can you tell me the door code and remember it? I'll remember the door code for you. It is 1170. To unlock it, enter the code and then press the unlock button. Based on these symbols, how should I wash this? The tag shows to machine wash at 30 degrees Celsius, avoid bleach and tumble drying, iron on low, and dry cleanable. Then what settings should I use on this machine? Based on the laundry instructions of 30 degrees Celsius, select the 30 setting under Easy Care on the dial. I've got this list of recommendations. Can you tell me a bit about some of them? I can search for these places for you. Cold Drops Yard is a shopping destination with unique industrial design, Luminary Bakery is a social enterprise bakery, and Tate Modern is a modern and contemporary art museum. Now we're going to try Project Astra out on the street. Let's see what it can do. I've always said scone, but now I'm hearing people say scone. Can you help me with the pronunciation? It's a fascinating topic, the pronunciation of scone. Both scone rhyming with gone and scone rhyming with bone are accepted pronunciations, though regional variations exist. What can you tell me about this sculpture? The sculpture you're seeing is called My World and Your World by Eva Rothschild, located in Lewis Cubitt Park in London. What kind of themes does her work explore? She creates abstract sculptures that invite viewers to interact with and interpret their surroundings in new ways. Uh, would these do well if I planted them back home? Mountain fleece can grow well in New York. They prefer full sun to partial shade and moist, well-drained soil. So your garden in New York should be a good fit for these flowers. I'm trying to get a gift for my friend, and this is everything she's been reading. How would you describe her taste in books? Based on these titles, your friend seems to enjoy a mix of history, biography, and perhaps a touch of political or social commentary. I picked some of these out. Any idea which one she'd like the most? Consider Half of a Yellow Sun for its exploration of complex social and political issues within a historical setting aligning with her interest in narratives that offer insight into significant periods. All right, next up is Project Mariner. And this one's a bit different. It's basically an AI agent that can uh, help you with tasks in your browser. So imagine it can scroll through pages, click links, fill out forms. Like It can pretty much navigate the web for you. Here's a demo of Project Mariner. We'll be getting feedback from a group of trusted testers and using their experiences to really shape how Project Mariner evolves. Let me show you how it works. So Project Mariner works in the browser as an experimental Chrome extension. I'm going to start by entering a prompt. Here, I have a list of outdoor companies listed in Google Sheets, and I want to find their contact information. So I'll ask the agent to take this list of companies, then find their websites and look up a contact email I can use to reach them. This is a simplified example of a tedious multi-step task that someone could encounter at work. Now, the agent has read the Google Sheet and knows the company names. It then starts by searching Google for benchmark climbing. 
And now it's going to click into the website. You can see how this research prototype only works in your active tab. It doesn't work in the background. Once it finds the email address, it remembers it and moves on to the next company. At any point in this process, you can stop the agent or hit pause. What's cool is that you can actually see the agent's reasoning in the user interface so that you can better understand what it is doing. And it will do the same thing for the next two companies, navigating your browser, clicking links, scrolling, and recording information as it goes. You're seeing an early stage research prototype, so we sped this up for demo purposes. We're working with trusted testers to make it faster and smoother, and it's so important to keep a human in the loop. After the fourth website, the agent has completed its task, listing out the email addresses for me to use. And there you have it. They're saying it scored like an 83.5% on some web task benchmark, which is uh, pretty darn good for a single agent setup. Again, it's a research prototype, so it's not perfect, but you can see where this is going. Like, imagine having an AI that can book flights for you, compare prices, and do all that tedious stuff. And finally, they're also working on AI agents for games. So they're partnering with um, Supercell, you know, the guys behind Clash of Clans and Heyday, to create agents that can, like, give you tips and strategies in real time. It can even tap into Google search to find you, you know, guides and walkthroughs. Look at this. Yes. I can see them. Looks like you need to pick up 300 gems and dust 10 boss monsters. You've already got a head start on the 300 gems. Cool. Um, I'll ask you to remind me about it during the game because I keep forgetting about it. Absolutely. I'll keep an eye out and remind you about the quests. Hey, so I'm planning to go on an attack, uh, but first I need to train an army. So maybe you could recommend troop composition for my army. Based on your available troops and their quantity in the top left of the screen, we should train a mix of giants, barbarians, archers, and wizards. The focus should be on using giants to absorb damage, while wizards can take out high damage defenses, and barbarians and archers can deal with the weaker buildings. All right, um, that sounds good. Hey, I'm about to pick a character. Um, can you do a quick search on Reddit? What is the meta? As in, like, what are the best characters? Let me look that up for you. I'll let you know what I find. From what I found on Reddit, it looks like Shelly is a good character due to her knockback and self-heal. It's also worth considering Jesse and Ice Wizard, which are in the A tier in the recent tier list. Do you want me to go into more detail on the tier list? No, it's good. To sell your crops, go to your roadside shop. You can set the price and amount you want to sell, then wait for buyers. Okay. Can you help me find where the shop is? I, I see the multiple buildings here. I'm very confused. Your shop is the building with the awning towards the lower left corner of your screen. It has an icon like a stall with red and white stripes above it. Hey, can you remind me about the quests again? What do I need to do? Don't forget about the quests. You need to collect 300 gems and dust 10 boss monsters. Imagine having a, uh, a little AI buddy that helps you become a pro gamer. How cool is that? They are experimenting with agents in the physical world as well, applying Gemini's spatial reasoning capabilities to robotics. So yeah, that's a lot to take in, right? Google is clearly pushing the boundaries of what's possible with AI. And, you know, it's both exciting and a little, uh, a little scary, to be honest. But it's definitely the future, and I, for one, am super excited to see where all of this goes. What do you guys think about Gemini 2.0 and these new agent prototypes? Let me know down in the comments. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe for more AI news and, you know, all that good stuff. All right, that's it for me. Catch you in the next one.